Okay, so the heart kind of leaves the left. <coughs> okay, so this is a very simplified version of the heart. Which chamber is that guy? Right atrium. Perfect. The right atrium. Who's this guy? Right atrium. Who's this guy? Left atrium. And then left ventricle. And then we have, this is where the superior vena cava dumps into the right atrium. We'll have the superior vena cava kind of coming up like this. Um, now, there's a really special group of cardiac muscle cells that hangs out right here, right beside where that superior vena cava enters into the right atrium. I'm going to draw these guys in green. A special bundle of cardiac muscle cells. They're super special because they don't contract. Okay, so they're muscle cells that can't contract. But they look a lot like this. So they still have the gap junctions between them. Which means that they will transmit a depolarization really well, but they just don't contract. So they're almost like nervous tissue because they help to spread a signal, but they're not nervous tissue, it's muscle tissue. Okay, so specialized muscle tissue doesn't contract, just spreads a signal. Another thing that's unique about this little green bundle of, um, of, uh, of cardiac muscle <coughs> cells is that they automatically are going to be polarized on their own about 60 times per minute. And so they automatically are just gonna have this rhythm of depolarization, change in charge 60 times per minute without any influence or any input from the nervous system or anything. The name of this bundle of cells is called the SA node. And that stands for sinoatrial node. This is the pacemaker of the heart. So it's a, I mean, it's a pretty special group of cells. These guys are just automatically going to depolarize and fire, create you know, this depolarization by themselves without any input from the brain or any other part of the body. And they're going to fire about 60 times per minute. This SA node is going to be connected to other collections of specialized cardiac muscle cells that make little tubes that spread out from the SA node. These little tubes of cardiac muscle cell, they also don't contract, but they transmit this depolarization. You're going to have one kind of tube of these specialized cardiac muscle cells that go over to the left atrium and then branch out. And then you're gonna have another one that kinda comes over here to the right atrium and branches out. The purpose of these little tubes, now they're, they look like nerves and they act like nerves, but they're not nerves. It's just specialized cardiac muscle cells that don't contract, they just transmit a signal. So this SA node is polarizing at 60 times per minute. Every time it depolarizes, it's going to send that depolarization along these tubes, which spread out through the atrium. That's going to cause all of the cardiac muscle cells in the walls of the atria to depolarize and contract. This is what drives the, you know, the beginning of the party. Okay, so everybody with me on that? So every time this guy fires, it's going to spread a signal, which causes the atria to contract at the same time. That's cool because we know that the atria do contract at the same time, right? No. There's going to be another pathway that leaves the SA node, and it's going to consist of these tiny little, like, puny tubes of these muscle cells that are going to stretch over here to the medial wall of the right atrium. That's where you're going to find another bundle of cells. So these little tubes are going to stretch right over here. These little bun tiny little bundles of cells that go from the SA node to this guy, this is called the internodal pathway. And the name of this second bundle of cells right here in the medial wall of the right atrium, this guy is called the AV node. What do you think AV stands for? Yeah, atrioventricular, just like the AV valves, right? So it's the node between the atria and the 
I'm just gonna show you the anatomy and then we'll talk about it. This AV node is then connected to a very thick kind of tube of these cardiac muscle cells that's gonna scoot right over here to the interventricular septum. That's what he is between the two ventricles. This is called the AV bundle. I'll label it here in a second. The AV bundle, when he gets over to the septum, he's gonna split into two slightly smaller tubes. One goes down here to the bottom of the heart, still pretty large. And another one goes down here to the left side. Again, still pretty large. Uh, this is the AV bundle. These two smaller tubes that split, those are the bundle branches. When they get down to the bottom of the heart, the apex, they're gonna do a U-turn and curve back dorsally or uh, superiorly and head up the wall, the lateral wall of each ventricle. As they head up north or head up superiorly up, they're gonna have these tiny little fibers that split off and innervate all the muscle, cardiac muscles of the ventricle. These little fibers that split off like that, those are called Purkinje fibers. So now we're going to explain kind of how this all works. The SA node fires automatically. How many times per minute? Six, six times per minute. Every time he fires, the depolarization spreads to each atrium about the same time. That causes all these cardiac muscle cells in the walls of the atria to contract, squeezing blood out of the atria as the atrial kick. When this guy fired, we also had a signal that traveled down the internodal pathway to the AV node. See how these, these uh, little bundles of, of, of muscle are super small, tiny little tubes? That means they go slow. So this, this signal travels pretty slow down this internodal pathway, and it takes a little bit for it to reach the AV node. When it reaches the AV node, it causes the AV node to polarize. That's gonna send a signal very rapidly down these very large tubes, the AV bundle and the um, bundle branches down to the bottom of the heart where it does a U-turn, goes back up, and then it travels through these Purkinje fibers where it finally innervates and stimulates the cardiac muscle cells of the ventricles themselves, okay? Couple things here. According to this arrangement, the cardiac muscle cells of the ventricles, do you think they contract all at the same time? Or do you think the bottom of the ventricle contracts first or the top of the ventricle contracts first? The bottom. Because it flies down here and it does a U-turn. These muscle cells receive the signal first, they contract, and these guys and these guys. That's perfect. Because if the ventricle contracts from the bottom up, it's gonna squeeze the, the blood up, you know? Contracts to the bottom and then the middle and the top, and that's gonna help propel the blood upwards and out these large, pulmonary arteries in, in aorta. Why did we want the signal to go slow right here? <coughs> we had to give the atria, atria time to contract before the ventricles. If this was a really fast moving signal from the SA node to the AV node, the ventricles would probably start contracting at the same time the atria did. That would be bad. Because they'd be working against each other. We want the atria to contract first, we want there to be a little delay, and then we want the ventricles to contract. Okay? So an irregular heartbeat can occur with a couple of different reasons. The SA node has the responsibility of doing this very rhythmic 60 times per <coughs> minute. Sometimes it goes crazy. Sometimes the SA node is problematic. One way that it can be problematic is um, through atrial fibrillation. Right? You might have heard that like AFib. You know, it's actually like a common thing. This is when the SA node just starts depolarizing in a very chaotic, random, uncontrolled way. If that happens, are the atria gonna contract properly? No, they're just receiving crazy signals. All those cardiac muscle cells are just going crazy. Right? They're not pumping. Is someone in AFib, do they die right away? You can lack 
actually live in the AFib. You might not be in AFib, you might not even really know it for a couple hours, maybe even a couple of days. The reason is, is because if the AV node stops receiving that appropriate signal, the AV node can take over and start its own rhythmic contraction on its own, its own rhythmic contraction. But the problem is, is the AV node can't depolarize as quickly on its own. So um, the AV node can only depolarize around 40 to 50 beats per minute. That's as fast as you can go. The SA node can go faster. So if someone in AFib, they are gonna experience symptoms that are like lightheadedness, you know? They might try to climb some steps, feel like, oh my gosh, I can't do it, you know? They feel like they, they just, you know, they're not, can't achieve very intense exercise, and their heart rate's gonna be really low, much lower than it should be. What, what causes the low heart rate? Who's setting the pace? The AV node, you can't fire as fast, that's why that heart rate's low, okay? That's going to contribute to a low amount of cardiac output, right? I mean, so that, well, we haven't talked about that. That's going to contribute to um, insufficient circulation because the heart's not beating fast enough. But also, what's another thing that's going to contribute to insufficient cardiac circulation? So we've got the low heart rate due to the AV node firing slower. But what else is causing inefficient circulation in this situation? What are the atria not doing? Contracting, so you're not getting that atrial kick that helps to fill up the ventricles. So it's an inefficient heart situation, right? But it's not deadly. Um, and so that's AFib. Now, VFib, ventricular fibrillation, is a big problem. That's when the ventricles start polarizing in a crazy chaotic way. Why would that, that, that is deadly, like if not fixed within a couple of minutes. Why would that be such a problem? Blood's not being pushed out. And you know, in a surgeon, they say if you look at a heart in VFib, it just looks like a bag of worms. So it's not contracting in a way that it pumps blood. Okay. That can lead to cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest is just a general term for when the heart is unable to pump blood effectively. It can lead to a couple of different, I mean, it can be caused by a couple of different things. VFib is one of them, cardiac arrest. A heart attack, remember what was a heart attack? We talked about a heart attack last time. It was a heart attack due to some type of blockage in the coronary <coughs> arteries. So now these muscle cells don't receive enough oxygen and they die. That has nothing to do with these rhythms, okay? But it still can cause cardiac arrest, especially if a large enough portion of those cardiac muscle cells are affected. Then it's gonna prevent, you know, appropriate pumping of the ventricles to lead to cardiac arrest. Um, and so a pacemaker, what that is, is a device that monitors the activity of the SA node, and when things get out of whack, it'll kick in to help reset it, right? Help it reset that automatic rhythm. <coughs> Another thing that can happen is called a heart block. So a heart block can occur when the signals coming from the SA node are completely not received by the AV node. So the AV node is not getting those signals. Heart block occurs when these signals from the AV node aren't received by, SA node aren't received by the AV node. Someone who has a complete heart block, what would you expect their symptoms to be? What would their heart rate be? So the AV node is not receiving anything, he goes, well, I guess I'm just gonna take over, and he's gonna start beating at like 40 to 50 beats per minute, okay? And you're not gonna experience the atrial contraction, right? So if you look at the EKG, which we'll look at in a second, um, you're not gonna see those atrial contractions. Um, a partial heart block occurs when sometimes the signal goes through and sometimes it doesn't. Well, what would you experience there? A regular heartbeat, like uh, the ventricles would miss a beat every once in a while. The atria would be contracting every time they should, but sometimes the, the ventricles just don't. You know? Remember how the sympathetic nervous system, when it's active, what does it do to heart rate? Increases it, right? And parasympathetic decreases it. That's because the postganglionic neurons of those sympathetic pathways, remember we had like the preganglionic, postganglionic? We've got neurons that come right out here and, and um, send signals to both the SA node and the AV node from the sympathetic nervous system. Even though the SA node is doing his own thing, his own rhythm, 
that those neurons from the sympathetic nervous system, when they're active, they'll tell the SA node, like, hey, speed it up, right? Speed up your, your, your rate of contraction. It does this by releasing which neurotransmitter onto that SA node. Because remember, this is postganglionic neuron in the sympathetic nervous system. Norepinephrine, it's going to release norepinephrine, and it's probably going to bind to <laughs> beta receptors. Remember those beta receptors? Those beta receptors are going to receive that norepinephrine, and that's going to tell the SA node and the AV node to do it faster. Yeah. And so that's how it speeds up heart rate. On the flip side, remember the vagus nerve? Right? The vagus nerve is our main nerve for the parasympathetic nervous system. He's going to tell the heart to do what? Speed up or slow down? Slow down. It's parasympathetic. He's going to have neurons that come right out here to both the SA node and the AV node, mainly the SA node. And he's going to release the pseudocholine onto the SA node. It's going to bind to muscarinic receptors, which are going to tell the heart to slow down. So you're going to have these inputs from both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic at the same time, telling the heart, tell the SA node, like, hey, speed up, or like, hey, slow down. The SA node is always under the influence of the parasympathetic nervous system, like the vagus nerve. And in fact, um, they, if you cut, this would be me, but like if you were to cut the vagus nerve of a patient, the heart rate would immediately jump up like 20 beats per minute. That's because the, the vagus nerve is always telling the heart, to like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Yeah. And then when you're really stressed, the sympathetic nervous system kicks in more and it's like, speed up, speed up, speed up. So it's speed up. 